Okay. Uncle Arnold was in command of a freighter. Uncle Arnold. He's Aunt Ella's brother. Yes. Uncle Arnold, Aunt Ella's brother. And what year is this? About 1912. Okay. Before he went on, you know, before the World War One, before we entered, we entered in 17. Steam engines, not diesel engines. But he was commander of, of a freighter in the Pacific, and one of his crew got appendicitis. No surgeon on board, so he headed for a port in the middle of a typhoon. Uh, Ordered uh, the full speed, I don't know about top speed, but full speed. In which, because of the state of the sea, the waves bent in the bow plates in front of the ship. Got to the, you know, the port, got his uh, crew on, uh, into a hospital, but the ship had to be dry docked to repair the bow plates. And he stayed. He supervised each new plate at the shipyard every day. Supervising the uh, repairs. Because of damage it did. The ship went back to sea. Now it's headed they had dismissed the crew. Of course, got another crew to pick up. The crew. What happened after that, I don't know. But I suspect yeah. that that ship became known as the well, Navy Collier just, uh, Cyclops, I think was the name. And it's 5 30 Eastern. The story it's is that yesterday back in Brooklyn, Toplansky's neighbors and their son was going to see on that ship. And they asked Uncle Arnold, how were the repairs? Great, he said. I supervised every, every plate of my son. One of the biggest that they have ever encountered. Was, they said the yard was. So I went on board, and the Cyclops... Are you done? No, I won't. The Cyclops disappeared. It was never heard from again. No? Including, including the boy. So there was, there was a Navy inquiry. He was... Subpoenaed to testify. He testified to what he observed of the repairs. But it's a private ship, not a Navy ship, wasn't it? The Cyclops was bought by the Navy to do coal. Those days, those, those days many ships, Navy ships, still yeah, used coal yeah, yeah. as fuel. It was, it was coal, called the coal year. But the name was Cyclops. How, was the, uh, how did how did you find out this story? Did you know your you, uncle? Of course. Oh, I didn't know. So, <laughs> where where did he live? Uncle Arnold and Aunt Irene's house, apartment, here is was, was on the 70th Street, within walking distance of what's called the 69th Street Ferry in Brooklyn. Oh, he lived on 70th Street in Brooklyn? Yeah, I remember the address. What was the address? 32. 32 70th Street. Well, number because it's near the Paul About what years did they live there? Uh, from the time they were married. 19... 13, 14, something. Until they retired to Florida in 56, the same apartment. My mother used to write letters and she addressed them 32 70 Street. Okay. So, and this is your mother was writing them from Dearborn. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, but. but you the know, outcome of the, the inquiry was that he was never indicted and accepted his testimony. It was the end of it. There was never an explanation for the loss of the ship. Uncle Arnold was certain it wasn't the repairs. They didn't. Who knows what happened? Nobody knows what happened to the ship. It struck a reef, sank, whatever. You know. So, what's the Toplansky history in dates and approximate locations for Brooklyn? So they they landed in New York in Ellis Island, went to San Francisco in 06. Your mother was somewhere around 10 years old. And they came right back. And they came right back. Well, the thing is, got and then they settled in Brooklyn. That was your mother. Yeah, my mother went to a school called Erasmus, one of the premier schools in Brooklyn. And she, and she ended up going to Columbia, too. First on her, and then Columbia. Okay. And then she and Ella started, I don't know what year, a school to teach English to foreigners. And how about you? Oh, who would want to lose my dad? I don't know. In Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. Let me check and see if we're going to have it. He arrived after the revolution. Escape. Yeah. So convinced I had to fly up there. Oh, trying to tell her I'm scared. So how long did your mom live in Brooklyn? She didn't understand. Until she got married. She was almost 30. Oh, so 20 years. 10 to 30. From 06 to... 06 to... They were married. 
Well, yeah, you were there, right? 01. Uh, oh, 06 to 21, maybe? Yeah, and then they took a one way honeymoon from Brooklyn. They got married in City Hall, yeah, right? You know, just a short sure. civil ceremony. We won our second. They uh, missed the ship. Yeah. Where was it? Not. They took a train so, to Poughkeepsie, uh, caught the ship there, up the, continued up the Hudson to Albany. Took a train from Albany to Buffalo. We got an overnight steamer with a cabin that was running then from Buffalo to Detroit. It was 1921. Yeah, five seconds. Okay. 1920 or 21. I don't know the exact year. I was born in 23. And they, they settled in a conclave of Russians. What else? That was in the west side of Detroit. But she was Hungarian and he was Russian. Yeah. Okay. We think they cornered in French. Dimitri. Ha ha. Dimitri. Thank you for dinner. Thank you for dinner. <laughs> you guys are heading back? Yes. We okay. Are. Okay. Now, are you going to be able to wrap up? Well, before you, so now that's how you get to Dearborn, but what happened to your mother's mother? How did she end up? She must have gone back. After Uncle Arnold got married to Anna Reed, and my mother and father married, and Ella was still single. She and her mother, their mother twice. There was bay all over. There was Went back to Budapest. So they left Brooklyn around 22 then, or did they t leave soon after? Soon after my parents got married. And they went back to Budapest. Yeah, they went back. And she got a job at what? Esso. Wait, what? Esso. Esso. All right. Same logo as in the States. Same colors in the, in the logo. Red, white, and blue. Thank you very much. Okay. Eastern, Esso stands for Eastern State Standard Oil. Okay. Part of the breakup of the Rockefeller Empire, I think it was 04 or 05. It was crazy fast. Anyway, so on summer assignment from Hamburg, Came a neat young man named Arthur, who uh, became my uncle Arthur. He married Anne Nellie. Yeah, I mean, he seemed took her okay, away yeah. from there, took her to yeah, Hamburg. That's yeah. where she lived the rest of her life. Really my grandmother so went to, uh, from Budapest to a town in northern Italy. He yelled at me when I said Miran uh, in German or Mirano in Italian because the city, the area, was allowed by the Italian government to operate. And the schools operated in German and Italian. How do you spell that, do you know? M-E-R-A-N-O and M-E-R-A-N. Okay. As it happened, uh, on our Italian trip, um, which was three weeks, three times, Florence, Milan, and San Remo, great trip. Good, easy schedule. You got to know each town. You weren't afraid to... To walk away from the hotel, you could learn your way back in the, yeah. in the week. See. And that worked out very well. Later on, we learned from Aunt Ella that grandmother had spent her last year in Muran itself. We didn't know that then, over in Muran ourselves. I knew a mother sent money to grandmother. I didn't remember the address or, or the town she was sending the checks to. But that's what she did. Yeah. So, uh, what approximate years was she in Murano? Until 41. She died in 41. No. Yeah, she died in 41, but not in Murano. She got a visa to the States. And she got a ship. Okay. I, but when, I think for Trieste again, I'm not sure of that. Ended up, and the ship came to, you know, to Manhattan, docked. Yeah. And there were no docks all over New York Harbor then. Um, but she died on board of pneumonia. Oh. She never made it back to the States. I had no idea. Did but you guys know our great-grandmother uh, died yeah, on Teresa. board? Yes. Teresa's her name? I think it was, yeah. Yeah. I like to confirm that. I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. So what year did she move to Murano? She left in 41. About what time would she... Well, I don't... That would coincide, I think, sometime after Aunt Ellen married Uncle Arthur. Okay. Which I think was in... 20, yeah. 22 or 23. And he died a year before Phyllis and I made our first visit to Aunt Ella, which was 83. So he died in 82. I don't think they made 50 years. No, from 20 to 
60. So she was in Murano for a long time then. Could have been 25 to 41. I don't, I don't know the, the exact year. No, that isn't what Grandma used to say. It was before the war. It was before the Nuremberg Laws sometimes. Yeah, no, we said she left there in 41. I'm trying to figure out what time she went and when she got there. You knew this woman? She married Uncle Lawrence. No, this is your talking grandmother's to, mother, so who we're talking I, about. But, of course, I did not meet Teresa. Right. But I'm talking about Charlotte's mother. Grandma Charlotte. Okay. Okay. So he was in, she was in Murano possibly for 10 years. Hey, do you have any idea why she went to Murano? It was cheap. That's all. Football Sunday. Football Sunday. All right, we're out of here. We will see you guys at the wedding or in the lobby. Okay. Right. Bye. Thanks again, Uncle Dimitri. Welcome. Why do you want a couple of those? Oh, thank you.